All right, everybody. We'll now resume. Our first speaker today is Rick Perry. He has installed the downloaded app, and he'll be giving us our, our first speech today. He gave me a response to my cleansing thing. He said he wants to try to cleanse his life of extraneous time wasters and social media. He also wants to get rid of some useless people at his organization. So he's here to talk to us about high connections and Rick Perry. Good morning. Some of you look pretty good naked. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, some of you have seen part of this presentation before, so I'll move very quickly. Um, I did something as far as morphing my life. I signed up to give a speech at the TED conference at the university coming up in April. So I got a long way to go in order to improve to make that a successful event. So I would appreciate feedback. I connect this startup company that is solving the problem of networking in groups. Uh, we sell to associations and associations, there's 92,000 of them in the U.S., associations all have the same problem. And that is, that is their hardware not working when it's supposed to. Um, that is signing up new members because people think they can get all the information they need about their association online, so why come to an event and see all the people? Their second problem is that they're losing their existing members. So they have to find a way to make their member meetings uh, more productive. And their third problem is that they want to find new sources of revenue. Well, this is a typical networking meeting. It's random. You've all been there. You find the closest, uh, friendliest face and you start talking. And what do you do? Oh. Well, I, I build birdhouses for a living, and I've been, oh, man. I'm into a conversation. How am I going to get out of this? Because as I'm talking to the birdhouse lady, there's three people that mean money to me walking by. Because a networking meeting is a money-making or opportunity-finding event, and you should try to maximize it. So we've built a product, an app, that identifies the people in the room and gives a little bit of background. This is how it works. You download the app, you load your information and in, answer the questions into the attributes, and then when you walk into the meeting, you press one button, and there's all the other people. Now you can scroll through a number of people in a matter of seconds to find the one display line that interests you and then you touch the name of the person that's of interest to you, and now you can see their attributes. Is this a person that I want to meet? Does this person mean money or opportunity to me? And that's really the purpose of the app. So some of the things that you have to overcome is, will people A, down your, download the app, and many of you didn't because your life is crammed with other stuff, and so you, you didn't get around to it. That's fine. The other problem is that will you enter the information? There's a lot of people, including Beth, who has mentioned to me that I don't want my information out on the Internet. Anybody in the world can see it. How do I know it's secure? So that's another thing we have to overcome. But the main event is the attributes. A different type of meeting would have different types of questions in the attributes. And I'm going to take a, uh, what's his name, opportunity. So these are the attributes, the beginning attributes, the name, rank, and serial number. It's usually the same at most meetings. But then they're tailored to the organization. For instance, if we were to have a Tech Masters app, which I'd like you to think about, what are the attributes that would pull us together so that a new member coming, sitting here, 
could pull down the app and find out something about that, and she just changed her job, and this person's thinking about changing her job. So it ties us together so that opportunities that we didn't know existed before we walked into the room some suddenly pop up. Now we're smarter about the other people here, and we can find out who can be an advantage to us. Now, the purpose of the attributes is to, is to give you a conversation starter, because you're now starting a conversation on a subject that's important to the other person. Probably not birdhouses. The other part of it is, when you start the conversation, you're starting it at a much higher level. You're starting it at a knowledge level, rather than what do you do? So that the conversation mo moves along much quicker at a higher level. So for the user of the app, it's a one-time event as far as entering your information. But before you enter the meeting next week, you change a few things. Because your life is dynamic. Your life morphs into other subjects of interest that day. So the association benefits by being able to sign up new new people because young people are all blah 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 doing their doing their Twitter uh, stuff into their smartphone, and it would allow them to keep their present numbers that we're getting the latest technology from our association. The meetings are more interesting, and and um, I can learn from going to the meeting rather than sitting home watching heavy people lose weight. And by getting a sponsor to pay for the app, they can make it a money-making situation. So it puts the user in control and makes their life a, a little bit better. One of the things I'd like to you to consider are what are some of the attributes that I could put in an app for the organization here that would tie us together? What do you want to know about the other people so that you can benefit from an application like this? I would appreciate your feedback, and I thank you.